guys. Can we have a moment of silence for that police officer that was killed in uh, Virginia? Keep her in your prayers. Thank you. Dennis, the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freelder Armwood. Here. Freelder Belante. Here. Freelder Kenny. Freelder Polos. Freeholder Tamaro. Here. Freeholder Valenti. Here. Freeholder Director Rios. Here. We have some recognitions. Yes, there are two recognitions tonight. Um, first is recognizing Eileen and James Ryan as 2016 Irish American Persons of the Year. And next is recognizing Anne Marie Williams as she is being recognized by the American Irish, Irish Association of Central Jersey. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, seconded by Fielder Tamara. Roll call. Fielder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder yes. Kenny? Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. No one here for presentations? No. Correspondence? Each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. The correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion by Field de Valente, second by Field de Mau. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes for approval? Um, the minutes from the Board of Chosen Freeholders regular meeting, February 18th, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. Is there a motion to motion. approve? Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, seconded by Freeholder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. We have ordinances. We have the introduction of first reading. The clerk will read ordinance number 16-001 by title only. An ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, of county guaranteed open space trust fund revenue refunding bonds of the County of Middlesex Improvement Authority, the, uh, refunding bonds of the Middlesex County Improvement Authority in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $21 million in bonds issued for the purpose of the refunding of refunding the outstanding and callable County guaranteed open space trust fund revenue bonds series 2009B federally taxable issuer subsidy build America bonds and authorizing public hearing thereon March 17th, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. and authorizing publication thereof. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance 16-001 on first reading? Motion. Second. Motion by Freelder Valenti, seconded by Freelder Tamaro. Roll call. Freelder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freelder Kenny? Yes. Freelder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. Clerk will read ordinance number 16-002 by title only. Ordinance of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, approving and authorizing the entering into execution, delivery, and performance of a loan agreement with the Middlesex County Improvement Authority, the authority relating to the issuance of county guaranteed open space trust fund revenue refunding bonds series 2016 by the authority of an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $21 million, pledging monies in the open space trust fund, therefore, and authorizing a public hearing to be held thereon March 17th, 2016. Is there a motion to adopt one 16-002 on first reading? Motion. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, second by Freeholder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder yes. Kenny? Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. The clerk will read resolution number 16-56 relative to the establishment of the cap bank by title only. Authorize increase in 2016 tax levy cap limits and establishment of a cap bank NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14 to be increased by 3.5% in the amount of 
$394,804.81, authorized public hearing to be held March 3rd, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. in Freeholders Meeting Room. At this time, we will consider Resolution 16-326, and the clerk will read the caption. Confirm the actions of the Board of Chosen Freeholders that previously adopted a calendar year 2016 resolution 16-56R to increase tax levy cap limits and establish a cap bank, NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14. At this time, I open up the meeting to the public on uh, resolution number 16-326 only. Motion to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Field of Tamao, second by Field of Valenti. Uh, roll call. Uh, voice. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 16 326? So moved. Second. Motion by Field of Valenti, seconded by Field of Tamao. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. <coughs> the 2016 budget summary was advertised in the Home News Tribune on February 13th, 2016 and posted in the lobby of the County Administration Building calling for a public hearing on Thursday, March 3rd, 2016. The 2016 budget detail was sent to each public library in Middlesex County in accordance with NJSA 40A colon 4-48. Clerk will read the summary of the approved budget. Summary of the approved budget. The total of general appropriations for 2016, $439,544,000. Less anticipated revenues, $70,581,000. Amount to be raised by taxation, county purpose tax, $368,963,000. At this time, I would like to recognize Freeholder Charlie Kenny, the chair of the Finance Committee uh, regarding a 2016 budget. Thank you, Director. Um, good evening, everybody. I am pleased to, uh, as I said two weeks ago, place before when we introduced this, place before my fellow freeholders for a vote the 2016 Middlesex County operating budget. This is a $439.5 million gross operating budget and it reflects the freeholder board's focus on enhancing quality programs and services that are affordable to our taxpayers and on an increasing operational, uh, on increasing operational efficiencies. The two th 2016 budget represents a less than one cent increase in the tax rate to our taxpayers. That, amount, that amounts to an increase of about $20 per household for the year. The budget is 2% higher than last year's budget, and it continues an eight-year-long trend of producing budgets with minimal increases. We were able to do this, because, do this because the Freeholder Board and those over the past several years made the commitment to do business better. The proof is in our longstanding AAA bond rating, which has saved us $35 million $35 million over the past 15 years. It is the elimination of using surplus funds to balance the budget for unprecedented five years in a row, which helped us retain the covenant bond rating and enables us to be prepared to cover um, the cost of emergencies, such as Superstorm Sandy. We've also worked to reduce, we've also have worked to reduce our workforce, and this has been done through only attrition because of the use of new technology and streamlined business processes. In fact, our average annual increase in salaries and wages has risen by an average of less than three quarters of 1% each year for the past eight years. In addition, our operating expenses increased by 2.1% year over year, proving our ability to keep the expenses we control in check. The main drivers in the eight, is in the 8.7 million increase in our gross operating budget include health insurance and pension costs and the amount that the state charges us for mental health care. All these increases are out of our control. We have balanced them with savings in our real estate rental costs by moving county offices into county owned buildings, increasing our use of solar energy and investing in clean energy solutions to power our facilities. We've also eliminated the central warehouse for a savings of about $1 million. 
Through our first in the state debt service policy, we have refinanced higher debt and decreased our debt service year over year. As a result, we have decreased our debt service by $3.4 million in 2016 and have reduced our gross debt by more than $47.4 million this year alone. Over the past two years, we have reduced our total gross debt by over 25% or about $172 million. All of this is good news for our taxpayers who continue to be provided with the most efficient and effective services at a cost they can afford. This budget, increase, this budget includes smart investments in our programs and services to ensure that our communities and our residents have what they need and desire. The 2016 Middlesex County operating budget is the product of a sound, sustainable fiscal policies, efficient operations, and a commitment to offering the best services at lower cost. I wish to thank my fellow freeholders for um, their support and help uh, with this budget and throughout the year as we work start now to work on next year's budget. I also want to give a, uh, a big shout out to the finance department, Joe Peretti and um, his team up there. This does not come easy. This starts, as I said the last time, in the summertime and the ball gets ro rolling along to be one of the first counties. Are we the first county, Joe, do you know? We are one of the first counties to introduce. One of the first counties to introduce and adopt our budget um, this early in the year. And uh, that's a lot of hard work on Joe and his crew's part, and I commend them for their efforts. And also our administration and the rest of our staff who stay within their budgets and try to find ways so we can have a budget that uh, increases by uh, less than or 2% each year. Um, it's through their efforts that we're able to be here, and it's through their efforts that they put the taxpayers first. And that's all I have, Director. Thank you, Freeholder Kenny. Before we open the public hearing on the 2016 budget, I would also just like to commend Freeholder Kenny who is a hands-on freeholder with the, uh, the finance department. And I would also like to echo his sentiments in thanking Joe Peretti and his staff and the entire county workforce for their help in preparing this budget. As you can imagine, it's no small task to put together a $439 million budget that provides first-rate programs, services, and opportunities while remaining cost-efficient. Our administration and finance department started the 2016 budget process back in July of 2015. Since that time, our department heads, our office directors and staff assessed the programs we offer, suggesting ways we can enhance our service delivery and save taxpayer dollars. The result, Middlesex County has done what the state or federal governments have not. We have controlled our spending, we have reduced our debt, we have maintained a AAA bond rating, and most importantly, we have continued to offer the quality programs there are, that our residents need and deserve. So I thank my fellow freeholders and our, all our employees for your work on behalf of the Middlesex County. And, and I really appreciate everyone's efforts in this because it's not an easy task, as, as I mentioned. At this time, I'd like to open up the public hearing on the budget. Move to close the public portion on the budget. Second. Motion to close by Freeholder Tamaro, seconded by Freeholder Valente. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion in order to adopt the 2016 county budget? So moved. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, seconded by Freeholder Tamaro. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. <coughs> Reports of freeholders. Freeholder Ken Armwood. Thank you, Freeholder Director. From the Extension Service Office, 4-H Junior Council presents Breakfast with the Buns in East Brunswick. 645 Cranberry Road, East Brunswick. There are two sessions for breakfast and activities, 9 to 10 a.m. and 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Tickets are required. Admission is $8 for ages 4 and up, $6 for ages 3 and under. Both prices include breakfast, egg hunt, and photos taken with the bunnies, petting zoo, face painting, and more. Please bring your own baskets for the egg hunt. Tickets can be purchased in advance by calling the 4-H office at 732-398-5261. All proceeds will go to support 4-H Junior Council Community Service Activities. 
4-H is a division of Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Middlesex County and offers educational programs to all youth K through 13. Cultural, culture and Heritage Folk Arts March Programs. Text CULTURE to 56512 for mobile access to arts, history, and virtual tours. Paisanki Traditional Ukrainian Egg Decoration, Saturday, March 12th, noon until 2 p.m. at East Jersey Old Town Village at the Indian Queen Tavern, Piscataway. Learn how to design your own traditional Ukrainian egg, celebrating the folk art dating to pagan time. Registration required at 732-645-4489, fee. Irish Music Song and Dance, Tuesday, March 15th at 7 p.m. at South Amboy High School Auditorium, South Amboy. Dini is the Irish word for people and the band is a group of musicians playing traditional Irish music played for centuries in Ireland and America. Free of charge, registration required, 732-745-4489. Workforce development. The annual spring job fair will be held on Thursday, May 12th at Middlesex County College from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Invitations are currently being sent to local employers asking them to participate in the event. Employers interested in participating in the job fair can contact 732-745-3970. Workforce Development Office began collaborating with Pepsi to assist the company in recruiting candidates for position at its Piscataway facility. The positions include CDL truck drivers, merchandisers, and warehouse associates. Over 50 job seekers attended the first information session held at the county's one-stop career center on February 22nd. It is anticipated that other recruitment sessions will be scheduled in the coming weeks as the company prepares for its busy <coughs> summer season. Job seekers, visit the county website and search hiring events at the Middlesex County One-Stop Career Centers. From the Middlesex County Vocational and Technical Schools, the annual Tech Expo, from digital film to food science, from dance to welding, from health technology to automotive collision repair, and from supermarket careers to pre-engineering and manufacturing, the students of the Middlesex County Vocational and Technical Schools showed off their skills during the district's annual Tech Expo. Career and Technical Education Month were on two themes. Students on the East Brunswick, Perth Amboy, and Piscataway campuses built theirs around career opportunities in their fields with an emphasis on local jobs while students at the Middlesex County Academy for Science, Mathematics, and Engineering Technologies in Edison and the Middlesex County Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Sciences in Woodbridge faced the original innovation challenge. The first place presentations were East Brunswick Votech Dance, East Brunswick School of Career Development, Heating, Ventilation, Air Conditioning, Perth Amboy Computer Systems Technology, Piscataway Votech Health Technology, Piscataway Career Development, Basic Business Technology, Edison Academy Project Vision, which provides technological assistance for the blind, and Woodbridge Academy Neurotat, a polyester tattoo to help control seizures from epilepsy. On February 19th, a number of government officials and other dignitaries toured the Edison Academy and watched student presentations. Among those attending were State Senate President Stephen Sweeney, Middlesex County Freeholder Director Ronald Rios, State Senator Linda Greenstein, Assemblywoman Nancy Pinkin, Assemblyman Patrick Dignan Jr., Freeholder Charles Tamaro, Middlesex County College President Dr. Joanne LaPerla Morales and Judy Savage, Executive Director of the New Jersey Council of County Vocational Technical Schools, State Senate President Stephen Sweeney presented a resolution in celebration of Career and Technical Education Month. 
And that pre-holder director. Can do. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take a breath in between. <laughs> Thank you, Freeholder Armwood. Freeholder Deputy Director Carol Belante. Oh, thank you, Director. <coughs> At our last meeting, the board was asked to consider <coughs> using open space and recreation, farmland, and historic preservation funds to help acquire a, de um, a development easement on a farm known as J.B. Heatherwood Farms in Monroe Township. The county, state, and Monroe Township each will contribute funding toward this acquisition. With the state paying 60%, the county and the township each paying 20%. The landowner has accepted the Middlesex County Agricultural Development Board's offer of $24,000 per acre for the 17-acre property. The total easement cost is $408,000. Our action also authorized the county to solicit requests for proposals for closing activities such as doing the survey, contract, and title work. I want to thank my fellow freeholders for approving the resolution and for helping the county preserve another farm and keep our agricultural heritage alive. That's my report. Thank you, Freeholder Belante. Freeholder Charlie Kenny. Nothing tonight, thank you. Freeholder H. James Polos. Thank you, Director. A couple quick items. Uh, most of you probably read about the enormous fire that took place at the GSA facility in Hillsborough a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> The reason I mention it to you tonight is because Middlesex County was requested to provide support services, uh, fire equipment, uh, tanker task force uh, personnel, et cetera, to that emergency. It's all part of the inter-county cooperation that we have. I would remind everyone that when we had the large North Brunswick fire, many um, fire companies and so forth were coming in from some of the surrounding counties to assist us. So it's great to see that partnership in, in work and in operation. I want to thank the uh, fire marshal, Mike Gallagher, the tanker task force team uh, that we have that's part of Middlesex County, some of the responding fire departments, both paid and volunteer, for their participation and their assistance at that large fire. With the new recycling guide is out, the Division of Solid Waste, Mickey, uh, Mickey's group uh, put together a beautiful new um, circular this year. There's also an online version. And again, I think I mentioned it at the last meeting this year, we are highlighting the municipal workforces, our municipal public works employees. You'll see some of them on the front cover because of the great work that they do in helping make us number one in the state when it comes to recycling. And I think that that's really a credit not only to the staff, but also to the municipal employees and to the residents who actually, actually have to put their recyclables in those blue containers so that they're picked up once a week or once every couple of weeks depending upon your community. So we thank all of you as well. Uh, our Heron Task Force continues to evaluate several different issues and themes when it comes to dealing with this issue throughout our county. And one of the discussions that has come up recently in some of our meetings is the issuance of Narcan. You've probably read in the paper that it is a uh, drug that will pull someone out of a kind of a comatose state who's on heroin, who has overdosed. It's a lifesaver, literally, to that individual. You've read some great success stories, I'm sure, in the paper, as many of us have, of how local departments have been able to utilize that, EMS, as well as local police departments, and it is a great lifesaver for those individuals who have overdosed. We see, though, uh, that there is one, perhaps, flaw in the system insofar as currently there's no requirement that an individual who receives Narcan and, and hopefully, God willing, comes around uh, has to have any type of medical care thereafter. And we think that it would be a good idea if the legislature could consider a revision to the law that would require anyone who received the Narcan, who obviously was blessed and successful enough to, to come back to life, so to speak, and come out of that state would actually at least have to go into a medical facility for a 24-hour period for observation. 
We think that it would be a great opportunity to be able to get the hospital personnel to talk to the individual. We could work a, an opportunity for the local nonprofits who specialize in drug rehabilitation to be able to come in and visit that patient with the hope that once they've gone through such a horrific situation, and although they've given that, gotten that second chance in life, that might be the best opportunity to get to them to convince them that there is a better way. There is recovery out there. There are opportunities to get into other types of rehabilitation. And it seems to some extent like we may be losing that because, again, there's no requirement that they go to a facility once they've been issued the, the drug. So we may come back to the board at some point to ask for a resolution to support that type of an initiative uh, and request the legislature to consider modifying the law to allow uh, that type of requirement. Last item is, is our reentry program continues to work very, very hard on some new opportunities to create a better opportunity for those who are coming out of our county prison. I want to thank the warden and the entire reentry group. We have a great group of individuals who meet regularly. And one of the things that we're looking at now is a, a video conferencing set up between our county prison and the Board of Social Services so that we can actually interview uh, inmates who are going to be coming out so that they can be vetted properly through the federal guidelines to determine if they're eligible for Medicaid, Medicare, or any other type of service that's offered. There's a federal requirement, which I was unaware of, we learn something every day as we go through this, this process, that interviews between the Board of Social Service staff and a potential individual who's trying to qualify have to be face-to-face. Well, it's very difficult, I'm sure you can understand, to schedule that and try to arrange that. So we're trying to use technology to our advantage and determine whether or not we can set up a video conference link between the board's offices and our county jail. What this would do, ladies and gentlemen, is be able to pre-qualify these individuals so that the day that they come out, they would be eligible for certain benefits, which, again, would assist them to kind of get their life back in order, hopefully reduce recidivism rate, and also obviously improve public safety in the, in the county. So real pleased, uh, I want to thank uh, Angela Macaronis for her help in trying to pull this together. Of course, the warden and the entire team. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Feel the trolley tomorrow. Yes, sir. I think we can all agree that although March weather can be unpredictable, optimistically, I'm looking forward to warmer weather, which will come next week. I noticed uh, daffodils already popping up, and it's time to prepare for all the fun activities and warm weather the warm weather brings. This coming Monday, March 7th, the 2016 Freeholders Youth Basketball Tournament begins its April uh, uh, begins, and in April our adult softball slow pitch begins. There there is still some time to submit your team for softball, so don't delay. Get into the action. Call the park office today for more information. Even though spring is near, don't forget that Roosevelt Family Ice Skating Rink will remain open until April 3rd for all your last minute ice skating desires. Then, as we do every year, the rink transforms to become always the most popular Roosevelt Family Roller Skating Rink. And now that South Amboy closed, we can expect some more business. Uh, scheduled to open on April 22nd. Finally, the Conservation Corps has three volunteer events scheduled this year. The first is Clean Ocean Action Beach Sweeps on April 30th at the Pirates Cove and Cliffwood Beach Waterfront Park, uh, May 14th and Migratory, Migratory Bird Day at the I Ireland Brook Conservation Area, and finally June 4th we celebrate National Trail Day at Janesburg Conservation Area. Call Scott Myler for more information at 732-745-3064 or visit our county website. And this past Sunday, I had the opportunity to take a walk on the Greenway with my wife and my little dog. And I just want to compliment how well our crew takes care of the Greenway. Um, you know, the, it's, it's a pleasure to walk on the Greenway and not find any debris anywhere on the Greenway. They do a fabulous job, especially after a winter when we've had a lot of, a little bit of snow, some a lot of snow. But, you know, it's so great to walk on there and see so many people enjoying that Greenway. Um, you know, it was, it was a great investment for the county, for the people who live in that area. And it's just not that, that park. You know, it's all our parks that they do a great job. And I once again, once again, want to compliment them. And I also want to compliment uh, Charlie Kenny and Joe Peretti in the finance department on a budget. You know, we've all sat through many budgets through, um, as council members. And, you know, some of them could be uh, worse than pulling teeth. Uh, but you guys doing a great job in, you know, getting the budget through. And congratulations. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to work with you on, on the budgets. Thank you, Freeholder. Tamara Freeholder, Blanquita Valenti. Thank you, Freeholder Director. And I want to also 
uh, praise our Department of Finance, uh, my colleague, and Joe Peruti for doing an excellent job on the budget. On February 23rd, I attended a Council for Children's Services meeting to hear New Jersey Department of Children and Families Assistant Commissioner Liz Manley present on the Promising Path to Success pilot project. Middlesex County has been selected as one of three counties to participate in phase one of the pilot, which focuses on establishing a single point of entry and a common screening tool for all troubled children greater emphasis on providing services to children in the most natural setting possible, engaging families more actively in planning for their children, and coordinating financing and the delivery of services. The Middlesex County Office of Human Services looks forward to working with all of our community-based partners throughout the pilot project. Once again, I'd like to invite everyone to attend Disability Connections an information and resource fair on March the 12th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Middlesex County Fire Academy in Sarahville. More than 20 agencies will be on hand to provide information to people with disabilities and their families. Please RSVP to the Office of Aging and Disabled Services at 732-745-4267. And that's the end of my report, Director. Thank you, Friel de Valenti. I have a few comments. I attended the uh, State of the City address uh, by the um, Mayor of Perth Amboy, and she outlined some uh, projects that are uh, ongoing in Perth Amboy, the waterfront. They're cleaning up the uh, waterfront area, uh, West uh, State Street, I'm sorry. State Street, they're redeveloping, and they look, uh, they stand to look at a lot of jobs there, a lot of uh, tax revenue coming in from that. And it's, it's just an upgrade to make that place look a lot better than what it was because it used to be, a, it was abandoned factories and it's, it's, a, it's a big plus for Perth Amboy. She talked about small business, how small business continues to grow and it, it's a priority for her administration. And of course for uh, park upgrades that they're doing and aggressively uh, attacking that. Also as far as public safety, they hired new police officers to uh, maintain a public city that's uh, safe, most importantly. I uh, sent out about a month ago a letter to all the superintendents of schools in the county to say if uh, I could speak in front of their students. And I started that, I, I got a, a overwhelming response by principals and superintendents to come and speak to students and I started uh, the other day, uh, Tuesday, in Carteret at their middle school. And then uh, yesterday I was in Metuchen in their middle school talking about different topics, whether it be government, politics, responsibilities of the freeholders, what we do, how we conduct business, the, the uh, services that the Middlesex, that Middlesex County provides to the residents and opportunities, and also to try to give them a little insight and, and, and advice as far as taking, uh, going to college, or trade school, or the military, but to do, make the right choices and hang around with good friends and positive people. And it really was uh, exciting. That's the best part <coughs> of the job is talking to the students. Also went to the Pisc Piscataway Day School and uh, participated <coughs> in the Read Across America program that's for the month of March, which we all get invited to go. And, and that's always a fun event because <coughs> it's interesting what the kids come out with and the questions that they have and how it's interesting how well involved they are in the current events. Okay, Mr. Kelso, do we have any resolutions to be added? There are none. Any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Any resolutions to be held? There are none. Any resolutions to be voided? There are none. This time I'd like to open the meeting to the public on any resolutions listed on the agenda. Please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Good evening, freeholders. My name is Charles Cradiville. I'm from New Brunswick. I'm the editor of New Brunswick Today. Uh, the first one, six, or second one, 16-315. Uh, this is for a county newsletter. Is this a new project, or is this something that's been going on before? We are trying to consolidate 
newsletters and have a newsletter that's going to give a broad perspective of upcoming events of what we're doing. Freeholder Charlie Kenny, if you'd like to expand on it, what's your? It's to, it's to reach out to the public and let them know you know what's happening in the different departments, programs that are available. It's um, as of right now we're looking at two for this year, one in the spring, one in the fall, and then reassess what we're doing and, and see how we can improve it from there. Okay, and can you just tell me what's going to be combined? Are there existing newsletters for some departments there, now? Some departments have um, various newsletters that go out. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you exactly what's going to be eliminated at this point or merged into the newsletter because it's our first one going out, and we're going to see how it goes from there. Okay, is there a time frame when the first one might be in mailboxes? Uh, we're looking April. at it probably April. Okay, and it will it'll be mailed out through the U.S. mail to every county uh, it's household? Gonna, yeah. Okay, yep. yes. great. Thank you. That sounds interesting. Uh, so... 16-384 is there somebody here from the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office tonight what's your question I want to ask who uh, which pro which investigators are attending this conference the RC that, that the policy that the the prosecutor put in place he feels for the security of and the integrity of the prosecutor's office it's in the best interest not to mention names of the investigators that are attending any kind of classes or training so it's a secret which investigators get to go to Atlantic City for this uh, conference. like I said the prosecutor feels that it's in the best interest of security and the integrity of the prosecutor's <coughs> office that their names be not not be disclosed okay is the prosecutor here tonight the prosecutor is not here tonight is there someone from that office that could speak to this I just answered your question. Is, uh, is, there, is, there, is there someone from the office represented here tonight in this room? Is there, yes, there is someone. Can, can, can they please explain uh, what the purpose of this attendance at the conference is? I could if uh, he sure. wishes. Ba basically, Charlie, I, I can give you an answer on this. Um, this is uh, an arson investigation. They need a license to investigate arson fires. Uh, this conference uh, is for throughout the state, fire departments, police departments, um, and it, they attend earning CEUs. They, they must have earned so many CEUs to continue their license from year to year. So basically it's um, people from throughout the state are getting together for classes and programs to maintain their um, arson investigation license. Okay, and so, the, and, and so the freeholders aren't willing to say which investigators are, are gonna be licensed or are licensed for investigating arson? Is, is, uh, is O'Malley one of them? I don't know. I mean, it's in the best interests of the public to know who investigates what. And so I just want to know uh, which investigators are going to be investigating arson in the county because I'd like to be able to look at their track record of previous arsons they've investigated. Can you please ask the person from the prosecutor's office if it's really that important to keep this a secret? I'll have the prosecutor's office get back to you and let you know if they can divulge the person's name or not. Thank you. I, uh, I don't know if you agree with the prosecutor or not on this, but uh, if you do, I'd encourage you to reconsider. Uh, it shouldn't be a secret who is uh, getting certain licenses and who's doing what uh, in the, uh, uh, what duties in the law enforcement here. It's, it shouldn't be a secret. We don't have secret police in this country. They should be public. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? I move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by field of Tamaro, seconded by field of Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Kelso. I believe we have uh, one resolution to be excluded. Yeah, resolution 325. Okay. Anyone else need a. Nope. Uh, Freeholder director, then a motion would be in <coughs> order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution number 16 314 through 16-388, excluding resolution 16-326, which was previously voted upon, and resolution 16-325 to be voted upon separately. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, second by Fielder Tamau. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder yes. Kenny? Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes.
Uh, now, Freeholder Director, it would be appropriate to consider the resolution excluded by Freeholder Tamaro, and that's 16-325. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, second by Freeholder Belante. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Present, not voting. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. Okay, at this time I'd like to open up the meeting to the public on any items that they would like to discuss. State your name for the record and you have five minutes. Thank you, Freeholders. Again, Charles Craddeville, New Brunswick. I'm the editor of New Brunswick Today. We are very proud of the work we do. We are a bilingual community newspaper. To my knowledge, we're the only bilingual uh, newspaper in the state of New Jersey. And uh, I'm here tonight to bring to your attention that the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office does not consider us a newspaper uh, insofar as they have removed all of our reporters from their media list where they disseminate information, uh, including important warnings and notices to the community. Um, this is unacceptable. This was done in the past, previously, when they were unhappy with our reporting uh, in 2014. We were removed from the list, and uh, I was able to convince Prosecutor Carey that it was in the best interests of everyone to treat all members of the media fairly and equally. Um, apparently, uh, our, our recent coverage has, uh, once again, uh, uh, encourage the prosecutor's office to not consider us a newspaper. Um, I think that they are in the minority. I think that uh, a lot of people get their news from New Brunswick today. And I think probably most of you up there have, it, have read it. Um, we are covering a lot of important <coughs> issues uh, and the prosecutor ultimately does not get to decide uh, what qualifies as a newspaper. Uh, I have a press credential and it says on the back, this is issued by the New Jersey Press Association, the New Jersey Broadcasters Association, the New Jersey Cable TV Association, in cooperation with the New Jersey State Police. Why, sir, does the county prosecutor's office not treat us like other newspapers? That's a question that I cannot answer because the prosecutor runs his department and we don't have jurisdiction over the prosecutor. Can you please ask Freeholder Polos, who at least that's his department? I just answered you, Charlie, that the Freeholder Board has no jurisdiction over the prosecutor. We fund their budget, and he comes under the jurisdiction of the State Attorney General. Is there a person on this board who part of their duties is to work with the prosecutor's office? Freeholder Polos is the liaison as the Freeholder Chairman of Public yeah. Safety to the Prosecutor's Office. Can I, can I hear from him on this issue, whether he believes that all newspapers, including New Brunswick Today, should be on the media list? Uh, yeah, Charlie, I, um, I can't speak for the prosecutor. I don't know what their process is, what information gets disseminated to you and or to all the news agencies. Um, I believe that news agencies are news agencies, regardless of whether they're a paper or a television station or cable. What their policy is and how they disseminate that, I don't have an answer for you. Um, but I certainly, as I spoke with you the last time, uh, intend to inquire of the prosecutor and express to him what your concern is. And again, he's a constitutional officer, so we have no direct control over what he does or how he does it. So I don't have a specific answer for you yet as to why or why not um, you're included. Okay. Well, thank you for answering. I uh, hope that you'll follow up on this. I, uh, the reason this, this is a, an issue is because we covered the case of Mr. Scott Campion, and without uh, recounting all the details, this is a, a sheriff's officer who was charged with crimes, and uh, we just want to know if the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office is prosecuting. Uh, we have inquired more than half a dozen times, uh, and we were told on February 1st, we'll check and get back to you, and nobody ever got back to us. This does not inspire confidence that the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office is being anything but transparent about the case of Mr. Campion, an employee who was a sheriff's officer and uh, lost that job or resigned, and then was hired back by the same department as a dispatcher, and then resigned again 
after criminal charges. The Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office needs to be transparent and they need to treat New Brunswick today with the respect we deserve. When you disrespect New Brunswick today, you are disrespecting the people who read it and the people who are a part of our team. And I think that uh, it is beneath the office of the prosecutor to play favorites like that. And I hope that Prosecutor Kerry will listen to this and do the right thing like he did in January 2015 and force his public information officer to add our reporters back to the media list. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Move to close the public portion. Second. Motion closed by Field of Tamaro, seconded by Field of Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion to adjourn by Field of Valente, seconded by Field of Tamaro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.